Hi everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood hanger hobbit here. Welcome to the German T-34 and a review on Battle Pass Season 8. Field testing. Today we will look and see, is it worth your money? I of course get it for free because I make so much on the freaking market with the stonks. That yeah, I can pretty much get all of them for the rest of the year. It won't cost me a dime. But yeah, for those of you that are actually having to spend your money, it might be worth knowing whether it's worth spending the money or not. And hey, this is perfectly fits because I got this for free in one of the previous battle passes thanks to all the extra war bonds they give you if you buy the battle pass. Yeah, you're pretty much guaranteed to get one, possibly two vehicles out of the war bond shop depending on what level you're going for. So that is a nice bonus with the freaking battle passes. Yes. So let's start by looking at the vehicles. Starting with the boat. Fuck the boat. Nobody likes the boat, and from what I've been told by boaters, it's a shittier version of one that's already in the tree, and the one that's in the tree was already shot. The only positive I can say about the boat is there's only one boat challenge, and apparently you, you can use the boat for it, so there you go. Fuck the boat. Who cares? Next up, the Blomin Voss BV-155. Yes. Very, very yes. I will definitely be keeping that. Interceptor spawn... Two twenties and a thirty. Yeah, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but yeah, you'll be dealing with USA teams, so who cares? They'll probably be lawn mowing anyway. Then we get to the tank, the object, whatever the hell. We'll just call it IS two one hundred because that's basically what it is. And no, I would say that one is a no. It's probably a sell. Simply because I have been told by people who know such things that it is most likely going to be either 6-0 or 6-3, which means it's going to get yanked up constantly into 7-3, where it's going to get cheat fs fucking death. Yeah, and it's the old IS-2 hull, so it doesn't have the improved armor, so it's not going to be that great to start with, and then cheat fs is going to cut through it like a hot knife to a butter. On a positive note, though, it does have the faster friggin' reload speed, so if you're good at the snipey snipies, then yeah, it might work quite well. So, yeah, if you desperately need something to grind your Russian tree, that's a possibility, but otherwise, yeah, I would say probably put that in the cell pile. Now let's look at the challenges, which I have to give guys credit for, are actually not that bad this time. Starting with test firing. Destroy 125 vehicles in three weeks. Ah, that's piss easy. Tanks or planes, that's going to be piss easy. Next one, factory competition. Play the specified number of battles while being ranked first. You don't even have to win, you just have to be first. So that one's not going to be hard. Seven battles, ah, that's not bad. Next one, a eh, little tricky, movement test, destroy a specified number of player vehicles, tank, tank destroyer, SPAA, you gotta kill seven of each. Uh, as long as you go with the right BRs, I would say like Russia 4347, Italy 4347, 5-7 uh, US, so you can take out the friggin M18s, yeah. Yeah, that, that one shouldn't be too awful. You'll probably have to be a castle for part of it, but hey, sometimes you just gotta be a castle. Next one's gonna be tricky, though. Receive the specified number of streaks. Optics calibration. 25 wards without a miss. That's three kills, no misses. The catch with that one, though, is, of course, Gaijin's hit detection. But, yeah, take out a good heavy tank beat the snot out of them. It shouldn't be too, it'll be a little painful, but not too hard. This one though, fuck this one. Firing in motion. Destroy a specified number of player vehicles while driving a tank at least 40 kilometers an hour. Yeah, unless you have a fast tank with a stabilizer, yeah, good luck. 30? Really? 30? Are you nuts? No, pass. Pass. We passed on that one. That one bad. Next one, operating time to failure. Win specified number of battles while getting three kills. Piss easy. Fifteen, not hard. Next one, there's going to be a trick to You're going to have to be a douchebag, probably. Bombing for accuracy. Destroy a specified number of player vehicles with an aerial bomb of less than 120 kilograms. BT-5 to IL-2. 
Take out the 100 kilogram bombs, kamikaze, you only got to kill five, so who cares if you freaking lose. VT5, IL2, ba 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 ba. Not that hard. Experimental samples. 20,000 points in a battle pass vehicle. Yeah, if you want to sell both vehicles, just take the fucking boat. 20,000 points in a fast boat, yeah, just brush caps. It, it won't be hard. Otherwise, I'm going to use the plane because, yeah, I'm keeping the plane. Plane's nice. I will keep plane. Uh, next one's going to be tricky, though, unless you are a dedicated tanker. Explosive impact assessment. Destroy a specified number of player vehicles with a caliber of at least 150 millimeters. In other words, you need S that ISU or SU-120, no, even the 122 won't do it. Shit, it's going to have to be KV-2 or Broom Bears. So, yeah, KV-2, Broom Bearer, I think they're the only really ones that's that damn big. Oh, well, no, what's that British barn bastard, the humongous thing that gets hit by a fart and it falls over and dies? Yeah, personally, I'll take Broom Bearer or KV-2. You only got to kill 10. That one's not that hard. Next one. Thank you, Kaijin, for only having one fucking boat challenge. And it's using a coastal vessel. You only need 30,000 damage. So, yeah, like I said, rush the caps with the boat they give you. Yeah, piss easy. Next one. Destroy two player vehicles in 15 seconds, specified number of times. Rate of fire standard, 10 times. You're going to need either an interceptor or a bomber that can do bomber hunting. Stuff like the T-1857, SB-2C, XP-50, uh, Brigand. Yeah, you want to get up there, smack all the bombers very, very quick with that one. Otherwise, it's, it's too easy. But that's not that hard. All right. Destroy three player vehicles without losing your own. While driving a fighter a specified number of times. Ten times. Eh, not that hard. Again, I would probably use an interceptor. Something like, again, XP-50s. Or, I, I really like the VB-10s. VB-10s work really good. Good ammo. Good handling. Yeah, this shouldn't be that one. Shouldn't be hard at all. Uh, this one though, what the fuck are you supposed to use? Ballistics calculation. Destroy a specified number of player vehicles using unguided rockets of various masses. Less than 5 kilograms. Who the hell makes a rocket that tiny? 5 to 40 kilograms and more than 40 kilograms. Three vehicles each. The more than 40 kilograms? Brit Cat or regular Cat. Take the tiny Tims. Literally point and shoot. It is so incredibly pissy to use. The other two, I have no clue. Uh, HVARs, maybe? Or those little crappy rockets on the, the Russian planes? Maybe those are less than 5 kilograms? I don't know. Who has less than 5 kilograms? That's a baby rocket. Okay. This one, though, I am going to skip. History of military equipment. Destroyed 10 player vehicles from ranks 1 to 7. So you've got to play every friggin' rank from 1 all the way to 7. Which, I have planes all the way up to plane 7, but you know what? There's stock and stock syndrome and where you don't have no freaking flares, no shafts, no radar warning. Yeah, fuck that. That's going to be nasty. So, yeah, that one I would probably say skip. But all in all, do I think this thing is worth the money? Well, you have to figure in the extras, too. Because it's not just the player vehicles that you get. You also get the war bonds, which guarantees you one or two extra vehicles, depending on if there's anything you like. Then you also get a buttload of SL, which if you're a tanker, that would probably be quite useful. I'm saying 109 million, so I don't know. You, but there is also a buttload of boosters, and I have found those damn boosters are damn helpful. When you get those friggin' planes or tanks that royally suck, you know, the stock syndrome is just so damn painful. Knowing that you're going to get a buttload of boosters, you can just throw at the damn thing. That is actually quite helpful. Plus, I have to say that the decals and stuff that they're giving away in this one, they look pretty nice. I mean, it's all field testing signs and little 
field testing lights. I wonder if the light works. If the light works, that's going to be freaking awesome. Be stupid, because you'd be letting everybody know where the hell you are, but hey, it's not about being smart. It's about having fun. So, yeah, I would probably use it anyway. Uh, oh, I love when you have a shitty crew, don't you? Ugh. All in all, I would say that if you're a tanker and you really like the Russian tanks, buy it. If you're like me and like to flip stuff, uh, the commie boosts tend to spend good money. I mean, even the very first freaking battle pass thing where anybody could get it at just level 75 and flip it, it's still going for like 30 gadget coins. So I have no doubt a faster reloading IS-2 will probably make eh, 30 to 40 Gaijin coins if you set on it for a month or two. So you'll get your money back if you're wanting to do that. And like I said, if you need SL, if you need RP, it's really not that hard to do. And all that extra SL and RP will help if you're broke. Otherwise, I would say, eh, just take the plane, it's free, it's not a bad plane, and if you grind your butt off, you can probably get enough war bonds even on the free one to get like one vehicle, so even if you don't buy the battle pass, you're still getting two vehicles out of this freaking battle pass, which is not too bad, but yeah, personally, Eh, I would still say it's probably a decent buy just because the battle pass challenges are by and large pretty piss easy this time especially compared to the previous ones and like I said if you're a PC player you can flip the tank if you don't want it so you get your money back and if you're a console player hey that's still a pretty damn decent tank I mean it's not gonna be the greatest in the world it's not gonna be PT 57 levels of broken but eh, I've had fun in IS 2s yeah it's probably gonna suffer in up tiers but yeah that's tanks for you I mean most of them suffer in up tiers but all in all yeah I bet it'll be decent it's not gonna be fucking terrible like bullshitter levels of terrible so at the worst, you still get a plane, a tank, an extra plane or a tank from the war bond shop, plus a couple of million in SL, and enough RP, you could probably go up maybe another tree, tree and a half, depending on what level you're trying to blow through. And it will help you get rid of the stinkers. Those freaking planes and tanks that are really, really terrible that you got to get through the freaking stock grind. Yeah, that's when those 200 and 300% boosters really come in. So all in all, I'd say this is not a bad battle pass at all. We'll have to see what's in the war bond shop. Hopefully they'll have something really sweet. Because, yeah, that would be nice. Guys, and bring us back some of the rare stuff. Hell yeah. Come on, people need to play stuff like tandem mice and oohoos and things like that. That would be wonderful for the freaking war bond shop. Uh, anyway, I hope your battle pass does good. I'm going to be grinding my little hobbit hiney off. And I hope to see you up there in the clouds. Have a good one, y'all.